The alert grouping feature is one of the most substantial added values of Simplify. It enables Simplify users to get additional context regarding a security alert and group security alerts into a Simplify case accordingly. This prevents wasting time and resources and prevents taking wrong decisions on alerts. Starting from Simplify 552, we took this feature to the next level by allowing our users to define a set of rules for a much more flexible configuration of their grouping preferences. To begin working with this feature, the user needs to define the cross-platform configuration, which includes the maximum number of alerts grouped into a case and the time frame for grouping alerts. And we're going to leave this toggle option for now and we'll get back to it later. Now let's check out the rules. We build the rules by choosing from the main category alert type, product or data source. We then choose a subcategory, which would be the specific alert type, product or data source that you'd like this rule to be applicable to. The next step is to decide what method you want to group by, either entities, which is Simplify Best Practice, or source grouping identifier such as QRadar grouping or any other product which has its own grouping mechanism. If you choose entities, you will be asked to decide whether to choose destination entities only, source entities only, or both directions. We have a predefined hierarchy between the rules. For every ingested alert, the system will look for relevant rules in the following order. First, it will look for a rule for this specific alert type. If it can't find a relevant rule, it will look for a rule for the product. Thirdly, it will look for a rule for the data source that this alert was ingested from. If the system can't find any alert from these three levels of hierarchy, it will group this alert according to an out-of-the-box rule provided by Simplify. This rule is a fallback rule for any situation where the incoming alert is not matched to the customised rules and it will always be displayed at the bottom. Let's use an example to try and understand the type of new use cases you can now implement. So let's say I'm an MSSP and one of my customers is using QRadar grouping capabilities. I want to use a QRadar grouping so I can see cases in Simplify the exact same way that my customer sees their cases in QRadar. So I'll set up a rule where the category is data source, the subcategory is QRadar, and the group by would be the source grouping identifier. Now let's say I have another customer using ArcSight, and for them I want to group alerts by common entities and have it with both directions. But now let's say I want for phishing alerts, I want to choose to group only by the destination entities without taking the source entities into account. So I'll add another alert for alert type, phishing, and we're going to group by entities and destination entities only. Now let's go back to this option that we skipped over before. This option we've added makes sure our users are really getting the most out of the Simplify grouping mechanism. This cross-system toggle defines the relationship between the two grouping methods, the source grouping identifier and the entities grouping. If this toggle is on and we have a rule which says that an alert should be grouped by the source grouping identifier, then this alert will first look for other alerts with this identifier. If it can't find them, the alert will look for other cases with common entities, and if it finds any, then this alert will be grouped with them. The goal of this toggle option is therefore to maximise the grouping capabilities of Simplify. We hope that these grouping enhancements we have introduced in this release will allow Simplify users to benefit from the various grouping preferences, enabling you to work as quickly and efficiently as possible while investigating a security incident. Please feel free to look at the Simplify Knowledge Centre for more information.